What's going on reefers? Blaine here. In today's video, we're going to be starting out our tank tour series. You guys seen in previous episodes, we've set up and installed some systems, but we haven't had the chance to go into some homes and check out some amazing reefs that are up and flourishing now. Today, we're going to head out to Mark Hatter's reef and check out his amazing SPS tank. If you think you have a reef tank you want to show off on the Top Shelf Aquatics YouTube channel, be sure to reach out to us by email, on our social media, or give us a call. All right, everyone. So we're here today with Mark. Mark, thank you so much for having Thanks, me over. Blaine. So we're going to be checking out this amazing system here. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, as soon as I walked in, I was telling Mark right away, I love how tanks become kind of this picture frame in our living spaces. And this one is an absolute masterpiece. So I'm going to kind of let Mark take it away. So Mark. When did you get in the hobby and how, how did you get into just starting to keep reef tanks? Well, I've, I've always been into keeping saltwater fish ever since I was 16 years old. So there was a tropical fish store that was on Aloma, the same street that you guys are located on, uh, that I wor actually worked at for um, about six months when I was 16 years old. So I put all my money into saving up to buy like a long nose butterfly fish. Fast forward to college, I had a tank. Um, while I was going through school and captured my own fish. So I'd go down to places like West Palm Beach and, and catch fish and keep them in the tank. And then uh, got married, uh, my wife and I moved to Hawaii and I ended up getting a 100 gallon tank, doing the same thing there. Um, set it up as basically uh, fish only, but I used live rock and captured my own fish. We didn't do anything in reef keeping until about 10 years ago. And um, I saw a fish store on Aloma I think it was called um, Aquarium Blue or something. It wasn't uh, Top Shelf. Top Shelf wasn't even a store back then. But uh, I would drive by it quite a bit and I was intrigued by it. So I went in one day and they had a reef tank and it was about a 70 gallon reef tank with staghorn corals and uh, other acros in there. And I was blown away because I didn't realize how far the hobby had progressed right. since I was doing it, mm -hmm. which was quite a few years actually. <laughs> So I became very, uh, very interested in getting back in the hobby. So my wife and I decided to get a little 20 gallon tank and uh, start simple. And we had it in um, the guest bed bedroom over there. And uh, we had a couple of very simple um, stony corals in there. We had a Syriatopora and we had a couple of Montes. And we would do part A and part B, alkalinity and calcium, um, cap full in the morning, cap full in the afternoon. And we were kind of blown away because we were widely successful. So I got real jazzed up about going bigger. So within a year's time frame, I got a 70 gallon tank from Top Shelf. Uh, they went ahead and outfitted everything and I had that set up against this wall over here. And it was great. I started to get the um, uh, acropers that I wanted to have in the tank, but alas, it was too small. Right. I wanted more fish, I wanted more corals. Right. And so um, I tried talking my wife into it. She's like, you got a tank, this is great. You know, you don't need another one. And one day she saw me in here with a tape measure, <laughs> measuring out this wall. She goes, what are you doing? I go, sweetheart, I gotta have a bigger tank. I'm just not happy with this one. So ultimately we settled on this. It was a custom build. Um, when Steven had the store down south, Okay. Uh, I ordered it through his guy down there and was very pleased the quality of the shelf um, or the uh, cabinet and the quality of, of the glass of the tank was just stupendous. It's beautiful. So it's really, really nice. It's a custom size. I wanted something that was a little bit deeper in depth right. to give me um, the impression that I'm looking deep into it. A lot of the uh, mm -hmm. cust uh, non-custom tanks just aren't wide enough for me. Yeah. So I was looking for that depth and um, assembled this. So this has been up and running now for about seven years. Gotcha. And some of the corals that we had from uh, the original 20 gallon tank, uh, we have the um, Montiparas, they're still in here, okay. pieces and parts of them yeah. from when we first started 10 wow. years ago. Okay. And then in the 70 gallon tank, I've got a hoaxamai, uh, cropper of hoaxamai right up here uh, that I bought as just a little frag. And it's interesting because Corey, he basically is really interested in the hoaxamai. So yeah. when he found out that I had some, he goes, oh man, have you got some of that? You know, we'd love to have some at the store. Mm -hmm. So every time it gets too big, I'll go ahead and uh, trim it on off and call you guys up and 
you know, Corey seems to be pretty anxious to For sure, to yeah. I that. mean, it's really cool. The growth structure on it's really, really cool. Yep. So what's the size of the tank? What's the so balance the, it's, it's size? So it's, it's just shy of 180. Okay, just shy. Yep. Gotcha. Just and, shy of 180. And that is that in including the plumbed in tank down below? No, or is that's just this system? Just this. And then this okay. is a, a 40 uh, gallon tank that's plumbed into the main tank. Gotcha. So at the end of the day, I said, you know what? I've got that beautiful space down there. Why don't I put a 40 down there, plumb it from the main tank and put it in a second reef tank? Right. Because I get to the point where these things grow fast enough where I'm constantly gardening. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like bonsai. That's what it I is. It's, it's, it's like bonsai gardening. Mm -hmm. And I'll cut pieces off of here and put them down here and they'll eventually grow out. And fast forward, here we are seven years into this right. thing and, and it's rocking and rolling. Gotcha. So you're more SPS dominant, you'd say, yes. out of all of it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Any, do you keep, uh, obviously I'm seeing on the side a little kind of a hammer garden, euphilia garden over here. Yep. Anything else that kind of sticks out other than the SPS that's in the tank? Uh, these guys over here, which is, are the- The um, alvies. The alveoporas. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of have- A mixture. A mixture in here. But the other thing is, if you'll notice the fish in the tank, I, I have pretty much a, a fowler type tank. Yeah, I was gonna but say- But I have a reef tank environment. Right, I was gonna say you have butterfly fish, you got angel fish, you got all kinds of fish in here that not everyone says is reef safe, but yeah. you got a reef tank running with them. So I wanted to push the envelope. And I know that these things are considered to be um, with caution, mm -hmm. add with caution. Mm -hmm. So yes, they pick on the corals. If you're looking for polyp extension in my tank, you're not gonna find it. And that's because the butterflies and some of the angels go through and they're nipping at the corals all day long. So they're extracting their, right. their uh, polyps. But I'm okay with that mm -hmm. because I wanted a more reef-like environment, yeah. something more natural. Right. Uh, I wanted to try to mimic as much as I possibly could, you know, a real honest to God reef, right. which has butterfly fish mm -hmm. and has angel fish things, and right. all those things, you know, which can be, um, you know, detrimental to corals. Gotcha. Speaking of fish, how many fish do you think you have in the system at this point? And what's the kind of main groups that you got? I see you guys, uh, some surgeon fish, yeah. you got your butterflies, angels, you kind of have- Probably, like said, probably about 20 fish in there right now. Gotcha, okay. So I've got, um, we'll try to add them up here. <laughs> I've got uh, four different angel fish in there. So I've got a regal angel fish, I've got an emperor angel fish, which is going through changes. Yeah. I bought that when it was small. Flame angel the coral and beauty. a coral beauty. Yeah, okay. So those are the four. I've got uh, a pair of butterfly fish. So those are the crosshatch butterfly fish. Uh, I've got uh, three separate tangs in there. I've got a hippo, Achilles tang, and then a naso. Uh, we love this guy right here. The Midas Blenny. The Midas Blenny. Yeah. Every, they probably have the, the best personality they have, of all they, the reef fish in the They tank. have really great personalities. Yep. They're goofy, goofy yep. fish. I see you got a bunch of damsels too. Were those fish that you added in the beginning? that have kind of stayed in the reef over the course of time? Or do you have them in there because you like them or have purpose to them? I like them because they were cheap and they had color. For sure. So I've got a pair of these yellowtail damsels yep. and they're pretty innocuous and don't bother anybody. Gotcha. Uh, in fact, they actually spawn. So I've got a male and a female in there and um, they'll go through spawning behavior and I'll find the eggs every now and then, you know, tucked up deep inside mm -hmm. um, underneath the coral. Do you have any aggression from the clownfish as well? I've seen you have clownfish yes. and you have a bunch of different spots for them to hang out with the anemones. It's really yes. cool. I love how you've got multiple, once again, pushing the envelope with multiple species of different clownfish and having them into a tank with each other. So the answer is yes. If I stick my hand in the tank, the clownfish <laughs> will come out and attack me. Right. But one nice thing, even though uh, clownfish are damselfish, mm -hmm. um, they stay in their anemones. So um, consequently, once they're in the anemone, they pretty much are, you know. Bound to it. Bound to it. Yeah. Um, I've got two pairs in there. I've got the skunk clowns over here, and then I've got a pair of uh, perculas in the back. And they actually spawn on a regular basis. Obviously you have a ton of really nice corals. Is there a way that you've helped keep them in the same place to not make them walk and not allow them to get roaming around and start yes. stinging things? So this guy right here, I originally had on the floor. Okay. And he was not happy, not getting enough light. And he was kind of moving all around the tank. So I figured he needed more light, but to get him up was somewhat of a problem. So I went down to the store and I got one of those um, bridge rocks and then took a flat rock and then bonded it to the bottom of it. And then took another flat rock and bonded it to the side. Made a bowl. Made a bowl and, and then bonded it to the inside over here. So it's actually negative space underneath. I love negative space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and then filled it with sand and then stuck him in there and he never moved. Was that so that was something you did actively when the tank was running already? Yes. You had that. Yes. So you created that structure while yes. it's going. Okay, wow, really cool. So has it moved since? It hasn't moved since. How so long ago was that when you did about that? About two years. Oh, okay. Yep. What are you doing for cleanup crew in here? I see you got a cleaner shrimp back here with his little station. What do you, what do you got for your cleanup crew? I've got uh, five different cleaner shrimp in there. Um, I've got a bunch of conch, uh, conchs on the bottom. They're all buried right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some larger snails, some troca snails in the back. Uh, I've got some sea urchins in there and I've got a giant uh, sea cucumber. Okay that I bought was the size of my little finger. It's now about that long and about that big around. Mm -hmm. What are you doing for feeding on the tank? What's your feeding schedule? What are you feeding? I typically feed uh, once a day and that's frozen food. And then I do nori in the evening. Okay. One guy says, you cannot put angelfish and butterfly fish in a tank. It just, it won't work. And it's, it's like, like, well, this is prime example well, that it works. Well, it does, it can work. It can work. I'm not gonna say that, okay. that everybody can do it, but I wanted to try it to see right. if I can do it. Yeah. And you know, it's worked for me. For sure. So these type of butterfly fish in particular um, are not uh, corallivores, strict corallivores. So they'll eat everything. They'll mm -hmm. eat everything from macroalgae to, um, you know, clams, stuff like that, uh, as well as pick on coral polyps, but it's not their primary diet. So I figured I could try to get away with those and right. I got them when they were small. Yeah. And I put them down here in the bottom tank at first and tried them down there and nothing died. Mm -hmm. So That's after right, about six not? months, I went ahead and moved them up to the main tank and it's been fine ever since. Yeah. I've had them about three years now. You think that's why you're maybe having a little bit better success is getting them smaller, maybe younger, and then trying to train them yes. to, to the uh, yes. kind of lifestyle in a system. Yep. Gotcha. Because they then know that they're going to get fed, things yep. like that, right? Then they won't go after those things scavenging in a way. Yep. Now I've heard horror stories about uh, emperor angelfish where once they change, uh, they suddenly like to munch on other, oh, other things. Oh, interesting. Okay, once they transition. But, and I had some um, um, some soft corals in there. Um, I'm having a um, senior moment on those right now, but <laughs> I, I had a whole zoas? bunch of- Zoas, thank oh, you. Okay. I had a bunch of zoas in here on the side and they mysteriously started to disappear. Mm -hmm. And then one day I saw one of the small angelfish wailing away on them. And I went, okay, that's the reason yeah, why right. they're just eating them. Yeah. So zoas are no, no, they're not going to happen in mm -hmm. there. I've been, um, knock on wood, successful so far um, with the um, the ones that I've got in here. Yeah. The euphelias, they pretty much leave those alone, which is nice. Um, yeah. The goniopores, they leave them alone. What's your maintenance looking like? How, how often are you doing maintenance and what's your maintenance schedule? Um, water testing, I test probably every other day when I'm not on travel for phosphates and nitrates. So okay. I wanna make sure that, you know, I, I don't have a lot of variation going right. on there. Mm -hmm. As far as alkalinity, calcium and magnesium. Um, got the trident. The trident right there does a fantastic job doing that. In fact, I almost got out of the hobby because I got into a problem where you can reach a point where the tank becomes so successful that the corals begin to strip out all the nutrients. Right. And if you get lazy and you're not doing the testing, right. you won't know. For sure. And so what happens is when they strip out the nutrients, suddenly they stop consuming alkalinity, yet you continue to dose alkalinity and calcium. So the alkalinity goes up. Right. Meanwhile, your nitrates and phosphates bottom out over here and then you get um, uh, burn. Tips, uh, uh, the growth tips gotcha. begin to burn. And so I lost a bunch of corals when that occurred so I went ahead and uh, got the Triton. That was kind of late in the game. Mm -hmm. And while I had that, um, that same problem where I got the nutrients all whacked out, I ended up getting uh, dinoflagellates. Mm -hmm. And that almost got me out of the hobby because I tried very hard to get rid of them using all the conventional methods that you hear mm -hmm. about. I tried doing the, um, uh, the blackout period. Higher temperature. The I didn't dose. try the high temperature, okay. but I, I did, uh, you know, the blackout period, I did um, hydrogen peroxide, yeah. dose that in the tank. Yep nothing seemed to work. Hmm. So as a last resort, I got a UV uh, light system in here. Okay, gotcha. UV sterilizer. Yeah. I put this uh, Mondo UV sterilizer in here. Five days later, it was gone. Did you run that 24-7? 24-7. 24-7. Change okay. the bulb once a year. Okay. It's got a nice sleeve in it. I think it's a 40 watt. Uh, it's hooked up to a big pump down there, so it does about 1,200 gallons an hour gotcha. of okay. return, yeah. which adds more flow to the nice. tank more as well. more flow as well, yeah. for sure. Do you know how big the sump is gallons-wise? I think it's probably 
15 to 20 gallons. Okay, gotcha. And then you got the plumbed in 20. Maybe less than that because it's got a huge uh, um, RODI reservoir over here. Okay. So um, maybe we'll call it 12 to 15 gallons. Okay. So there's a protein skimmer in there. Uh, the RODI is actually hooked up to a seven stage filter in the laundry room. I ran the PEX tubing through the roof, down the wall, oh, wow. and out through here nice. into the tank. So it's hands free. That's great. Um, this tank needs to be hands free except for feeding because yeah. when I take off in these, th these right. trips that I do, right. uh, my wife has to take care of the tank. And right. all she wants to do is feed. Right. She doesn't want to do anything except feed the fish. Right, makes sense. So keep it simple. It, Got to keep it as simple as we possibly can. Full Apex system, is that what you're yeah. running down below? Yeah. Okay. So I got a computer system that's set up in the wall over gotcha. here. Gotcha. Very nice. And then and you, a cabinet. Then you can check it as you go on, on the go on your tablet yeah. and your phone whenever you're gone. Yeah. And so even when I'm remote, I can I can change things and don't have to talk to my wife about it. I can just right. get on my telephone, and you can do you know, it get on the work. app and right. you know, take care of things. And right. I and I've done that. That's great. That's so, nice. Makes it makes it really good. simple. So plumbing wise, uh, this drains down to the sump. But I've also got a T-fitting in here, which drains down into the 40 gallon, and then the 40 gallon is drilled, so then it eventually drains into the sump. Gotcha. So, so it is quite the big It's like system. a little separate reef tank Yeah, it's down like there. a separate, I know, I was laughing, I was looking at it, it's like, people wish they could have a reef tank like that, <laughs> and it's in the stand right now. So it looks, it looks great. I've got T-5s along with uh, LEDs in here. The LEDs are in the middle, and even though they've got reflectors on them, it just doesn't reach out all the way. The T-5s reach out on either side, Gotcha. So you have one, two, three XR30s, and mm -hmm. then you got the two L, uh, T5 yep. fixtures. Okay. Yep. How so, long are you running your lights for? Uh, about 12 hours. 12 hours a day. But it's okay. a ramp up and a ramp down. How so there's eight ramp? hours, okay. eight hours eight of hours like peak. par. Okay, gotcha. High, high par, high par. For, okay. for everything. Uh, they're Neptune pumps. Neptunes, okay. Yep. And they're set up on a cycle where um, they go from 20% to 100% um, twice every 24 hours. Gotcha. The four in total, and then you yeah. have the return pump as well? Yep. Neptune yep. return pump? No, it's a uh, Vario 7. Okay. Reef Octopus Vario 7. Okay. And then I've got a Reef Octopus skimmer down there. And I run the skimmer 20 hours a day. I shut it off for four hours a day because I also dose uh, Brightwell uh, amino acids. Are you dosing mainly at night that, or are you dosing that? I dose it during the day. During the day, okay. Yeah. Because I think that's where you know most of the growth the of the stuff is happening. happening. Right. What salt are you using for the tank? What's the <laughs> salt that you're? What's the what's the magic sauce that you're using? <laughs> um, it's called the uh, reefer salt. So um, it's made in Germany. Okay. And I like it because it dissolves instantly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, quick quick to do ch water it, changes. It, it things becomes like that. clear in a matter of like 15 minutes. Oh wow which is something I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And I just got hooked on using it and I've been using it ever since. Now, having said that, I don't do water changes in the big tank. Okay. The only time I do a water change is down is for the small one now. Okay. Um, the reason why I don't do water changes is I use the modified um, or, um, or the hybrid uh, balling method. Mm. So I've got uh, trace elements in the calcium mix. I got trace elements in the alkalinity mix. And then I've got a third tank over here, which is um, the salt mix, less sodium. And I've noticed that since I've gone to that, um, I have not had to do water changes to keep the coral colors. Right. It's been, you know, pretty amazing, actually. When was the last time you actually did a water change? Did a water change? <laughs> yeah. Six months ago. Wow, okay. And when I do it, it's maybe 10 to 12 gallons I was just time. about to ask, is it so small? It's just a ones? small garbage can. Gotcha. Right? And it might be because I mixed up, you know, something for here mm -hmm. or... You just have something left yeah. over, things like yeah. that. I wonder what would happen if I stopped doing it now that I'm it doing the method. balling hybrid method. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I've been super pleased with How long have you been doing that method now then? About two years. About two years, okay. Yep. Very cool. The other thing I've done is because I'm limited in space, um, typically when you're doing the two-part mix, you'll have um, crystals, right? Right. So you have soda ash and then you have calcium crystals. And it's like um, a certain amount in a gallon of water. Well, I was constantly having to top things off when I did the regular mixture. So I started upping it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I've got uh, double the mixture in here. Oh, okay. So I've got uh, twice as much. You got a lot to, you got a lot of inside the tank. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Well, it, it just, it doses at the same rate as it, um, it doses at half the rate it was doing before mm -hmm. because it's double the, um, the double concentration. The concentration. Okay. So in one gallon, rather than four cups, I've got eight cups. And um, at first I was worried that it would precipitate out and I would have a problem. And then the second issue was, well, 
if I start to add it in, you know, what kind of a problem is that going to create? So particularly for the soda ash, not so much for the calcium or for the salt. So what I ended up doing was um, I've got a little cir uh, circulating pump down there and I've got it just underneath where the drip hose comes in for the soda ash. So when it comes in it immediately mixes it up and uh, does a good job doing that. So when I dose, um, I dose 12 times a day for um, calcium, 12 times a day for al um, alkalinity and 12 times a day for the salt. So it's like every other hour. Gotcha. Calcium's um, alkalinity. Flipping back and forth. Yep. Yep. Very cool. The tank is amazing. Mark, you've done Thank you. an outstanding job with it. You know, we're going to definitely be showing off some closer shots as we're talking through and doing all this. It seems like you kind of like to do a more natural thing. And I, I really like that. You're cr trying to create these actual boomies you'd see out in the wild. And, you know, you're pushing the envelope with all your different fish, all the different corals together. Um, so it seems like more of a natural side, you kind of minimal mechanical filtration, things like that. Try, try to keep it natural though. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Well, thanks so much, Mark. You're uh, very welcome. This has been awesome. I appreciate you letting My us pleasure. come into your house and check out the tank. And uh, yeah, once again, a beautiful system. Um, I'm sure you guys are enjoying this one. I had a lot of fun talking with Mark, going over his system, talking about the hobby. Um, we talked about it earlier. It's kind of like car guys, you guys, you know, we get into these tanks, get talking about systems, and it's just a lot of fun. So I want to say thank you again, Mark. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Brian. And we'll definitely be coming back to check out the system soon.